So, uh, obviously, this is the eye candy portion of the event today. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. It's just my feelings. But <laughs> you've, you've helped me lead right into what I want to talk about today. Between that incredibly inspiring introduction and what you see presented in front of you, you've already made assumptions of who I am. It's what we do. It's human nature. It's... It's what makes reality TV so great. They, they don't cast people, they cast types. Um, unfortunately, that's not necessarily the best way to get the full picture of what's really going on. Stephen Crane once wrote, Think as I think, said a man, or you are wicked. You are a toad. So fine, I'll be a toad. Who wants to be a toad? Really? So nobody, want, so nobody wants to be a toad. All right, that didn't go the way I thought it was going to go. <laughs> so the question now is, who's even hashtag toad at this point? I've, I've been fascinated with this whole idea that we've built this mythology around our country of, of rugged individualism, and yet we are completely consumed with the need to fit in and be accepted. We... We, we tell kids that they can grow up and be whatever they want to be, to uh, think for themselves, be their own person, march to the, to, to, to the beat of their own drum. And then we send them to school, we make them take a standardization test, and we compare how they do to everybody else. We tell them, you want to get ahead in life? Then this is what you have to do. Do you want to fit in? Do this. Act like this. Listen to this. Think like this. Believe in this, and most importantly, don't question any of this. For myself, I've always desired to have a creative outlet, and as an artist, I had my epiphany moment about 12 years ago. I was, for, you know, like any great epiphany moment, it happened while I was watching TV. <laughs> uh, the news was on, and at the end of the news, they always did a crime uh, stoppers report, and they had described that the... Uh, the, the convenience store in downtown Charleston had been robbed by a man of average build, average height, average weight, wearing a Carolina baseball cap, a blue Adidas sweatshirt, dark blue jeans, and white shoes. What I realized at that moment is that fashion plays an incredibly important role in robbing the little cricket. <laughs> and if you want to get away, just take a change of clothes and you're home scot-free. <laughs> it also made me realize that we don't pay attention to what anybody looks like. I would challenge all of you, everybody's out there getting coffee just a few minutes ago. Could you describe to me what the person in front of you waiting in line for coffee looked like? You could probably tell me what they were wearing, or at least some of the people you saw, you'd recognize their clothes. But how many eye colors did you notice? How much hair? Um, what this led me to do was I was really interested in how, as a portrait artist, could I start challenging the notion of, of how we relate to other people's identity. I became very interested in especially painting homeless people. And uh, the first time I had the opportunity to show this work, it was at a gallery down in Charleston, and I invited a lot of my subjects to come to the, sh to, to the opening. Interestingly, most of them decided to panhandle outside of the door and take advantage of the art patrons that were coming in. None of them actually went into the show. At the show, I would ask these people that came and looked at the work, did they recognize anybody, did they connect with anybody? And some people would say that they, somebody looked familiar, but they weren't quite sure where. Unfortunately, had they looked only 30 feet out the window of the front door, they would have seen Thomas across the street panhandling and trying to get a buck from him. We don't pay attention, but yet we are completely aware of how our body looks and, how, and the concern we have with how other people are perceiving us. And this idea of body image as a painter has always, it's always been a great thing to be able to paint figures. And over the years, I've had a lot of my friends volunteer to paint, and there's a very common thing that happens. It's okay to paint my face, just don't show any naughty bits. It's okay to paint my naughty bits, just don't show my face. The whole naughty bit thing could be another TED Talk, and I don't want to really get into that right now. But it's interesting how we are so consumed with how we're perceived, 
we look, but we don't want to be seen. Or we want to be seen, but we don't want anybody to look. This interest in body image over the last three years has really taken me into a new direction. And I focus most of my time on uh, tattooing. There's an interesting thing that happens when you go to work and you roll up your sleeves and you present what your skin looks like. The one truth with tattooing is there's always a reaction. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, it's rarely indifferent. Being judged is always a part of having a tattoo. You know, for most people, tattoos are solely reserved for criminals and whores. And no good God-fearing person would want to do that to their body. The fact of the matter is, you know, uh, hair dyes, wigs, and plastic surgery. That's the only type of, of body modification that the good Lord approves of. And most people would say this is simply a fad. And they're right. It is a fad. Tattooing is a fad that's been around for 5,000 years. It's older than the pyramids, 2,000 years older than the pyramids. Maybe in 2,000 years there'll be a show about building great big triangles. <laughs> the thing I love about tattooing is that I get to work with people to present the skin that they want to wear. The fact of the matter is, the way we look, we don't have a whole lot of control over. Sure, we can go to the gym and we can, well, some of you can cut your hair, but <laughs> it's mostly genetic. But I get to help people present who they want to be and what they want to put out there, whether it's their spirit animal to, or, or, or to represent that they're a, a, a different member of the pack. For some people, it's having that coat of armor. Maybe that just helps him kick a little more ass at work. And we all have seen those tattoos that everybody thinks is a mistake. And we've all made mistakes in our lives as part of just human growth. Fortunately, with tattoos, sometimes you can right a wrong. And sometimes that takes a little bit of humor to make it happen. Sometimes a tattoo is, is just a way to tell a loved one who is in the, in, in, in the initial stages of onset dementia because of brain cancer that they won't be forgotten. Sometimes it's just share your interests and to wear your colors. But imagery of a tattoo is only half of the equation. Location also plays a part. Some people want to wear it loud and proud. Some people want it a bit more disguised. It's something for them and they get to control when, when it is shown. So the great question is, and we get this all the time, what's that gonna look like when I'm 80? <laughs> Are there any chance there's any octogenarians in here that would like to get up on stage and drop down to the birthday suit so we could have a, uh, a, a, a look at what, that, what that's like? No? All right, well, Everyone just close your eyes, picture grandma and grandpa naked. <laughs> Some of us are just gonna be a little more colorful. You know, the idea of grandparents is, is interesting. This is a tattoo that I did not too long ago, and it was in honor of her grandparents. Um, they had both passed. Uh, her grandmother had always told her the importance of staying in the lines and, 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 and mining the straight and narrow. Her grandfather told her to live outside of the bounds as far as possible. So we have a line with no discernible edge. And sometimes I think that's important for people to think about. You know, it's whether you want to present a colorful life or just a simple statement. The important thing is that you discover who you are for yourself. A lot of people want to get caught up on the whole idea of tattoos are great, tattoos are wrong. And too many people get caught up in just drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> the challenge I would like to give all of you is to simply discover who you are for yourself. And then be yourself. And accept yourself. There are a lot of toads in this world, and be your own toad. And sometimes, you just gotta tell the world what you want it to do. <laughs> and don't be afraid of who the other toads in the room are because sometimes there might be a toad with an anchor on his arm that's the type of person that the world needs. And some of those toads might even be in this room. Thank you. Oh.